this site here is called Battery University. And if you go to batteryuniversity.com, you'll be able to find out everything you need to know about batteries. And I'm going to take all of the information from here because this <coughs> is good stuff. We use different batteries. We use lithium cobalt oxide, which it says here is high capacity for cell phone, laptop and camera. In other words, the kind of the kind of lithium ion batteries that have been in use for donkey's ages. But then we get <coughs> into these ones, what's known as safer chemistry. That's lithium manganese oxide, lithium iron phosphate or lifepo, and lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide. And if you can <coughs> see that lot after 16 pints, you're doing well. And this is the important part across at the right hand side where it says most safe lower capacity than, than lithium cobalt but high specific power and long life they're used in power tools e-bikes ev whatever that is medical and hobbyist and the ones at the bottom the lithium titanate and what have you we don't need to mention at the moment because we don't get <coughs> to see them now <coughs> the thing is about lithium iron batteries no matter what the chemistry they all have the same kind of issues associated with them. That is to say, like any rechargeable battery, they can develop an internal short circuit, and if they do, and it's very rare, but if they do, you can get an outgassing, and sometimes what you would describe as an explosion, but it isn't. It's just, it's a burn. The gas that, that, that comes off them burns. But there are various different types of, of lithium ion batteries that we get in amongst all of that. There are, what was it we said earlier on, Chris? Nipples and flat tops. Nipples and flats. Nipples and flats. Let's talk about nipples and flats. And here on camera foo is an example of a nipple top. And it's called a nipple top because it just sticks out slightly, a little bit, like a nipple I suppose you see that mm -hmm. yeah that's a nipple top and then you have as a corollary a flat top if I put the two together the flat top is usually bigger and the nipple top sticks out the flat top doesn't you can see that <laughs> yeah can you see the difference why Keith? can't they just call it a protruding top and a flat top well I don't know We've always called them nipple tops. Nip, we've always called them nipple tops. All oh, right. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Yes. I suppose it's a little bit more memorable, and I suppose as well it gives you a little bit of uh, a little bit of enjoyment when you go in a shop and say, "Can I have a nipple top eighteen six fifty, please?" It just makes them wonder a little bit. The thing about a nipple top, of course, is it's going to be slightly longer than a flat top. All other things being equal. And you might wonder to yourself, well, what's the situation with that? Well, let me tell you, and again, going back to camera four, what you gen generally see, and this is one with its clothes taken off. It's a flat top with its clothes off, and I'm going to take... It's a naked nipple. Pardon? No, it's a no, flat. It's, not. it's a naked flat. It's a naked flat. And I'm going to take it to bits while we're actually live, and I shall do it with my thumbnail, so I'm not using anything metallic. But as I pull this out and I'm going to try and do it on camera as much as I can you'll see down here that copper strip mm -hmm. and that copper strip goes down to a, an integrated circuit board that's at the bottom here and that is the protection circuit that sits on the battery now a lot of people think the protection circuit is this white bit or where this little lump is <coughs> the little groove is on this battery with its it's got its overcoat taken off but if I was to pick up another protected battery here, this, the bottom of this ultra fire, you'll see a groove there. Yep. That's where the protection circuit sits. It doesn't sit at the top. There's also um, a bit of misinformation that this is a thermal cutout, that it'll burn out. It doesn't. It actually carries some of the positive current down to the protection circuit at the bottom to try and keep it in one piece. Right, so. I told a lie, I'm <coughs> going to use plug and felters to get this off. So as you can see, that top bit is just soldered on. And you can see here, that's going to go down to the protection circuit at the bottom. 
and at this point I need one of my trusty knives because I'll cut the protection circuit off and then you can see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to say don't try this at home. We're doing this so you don't have to. Um, because it can end up being a little bit nasty. And I've done it. I've just got to put a little snip in this. In the right place so that I can get these out. And you can see what's going on and how it all comes together. I'll do it on close up your camera mate, as well. You can see that the, there is a little contact piece here, so I'll just snip that. This battery is now unprotected, but that there is the protection circuit, and that is the actual bottom of the battery. All right? Yeah. So the protection circuit sits at the bottom of the battery, and what that will do is it limits the amount of current that a battery can put out. So if you are using... A purely mechanical mod a mod that has no uh, electronics in it if you were to use an unprotected battery then decided to do something daft like building a half ohm coil going really sub ohm on one of these older generation lithium ion batteries i.e. not an <coughs> IMR not a 30 amp not a safer chemistry battery then you could very well cause something like this older one to overheat and the protection circuitry would limit the amount of current it would put out to around about two and a half amps usually um, with a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts so that's that's the makeup if you like of a protected battery and it's actually constructed in an outer case from an inner battery with the addition of all the various different bits and bobs on so what about the makeup of the battery itself? The makeup of the battery itself, it's, it's actually quite, I think it's quite interesting, but I'm a geek. And if you like, the easiest way to put it is, it's like phyllo pastry. Right. And the, the phyllo pastry is a membrane between two chemicals. Right. And there's, there's a, a cathode and an anode style. The cathode will be carbon with either manganese oxide, uh, iron phosphate, cobalt oxide and manganese, or any of the other makeups of these things, right? Right. And effectively, those are attached, and then just, just as you would with phyllo pastry, you roll it up. I mean, like a lot of other things that you take for granted, you know, it makes you think, how are these things mass produced? Which obviously they are. Um, I would say very carefully, <coughs> given manganese's potential for, for going off. It's a, a very, yeah. it's an, an, an unstable element. Is, man, is uh, lithium? Sorry, not manganese. Lithium is a, an unstable element, and it'll burn quite easily. Hence, why you've got to safely dispose of them. Oh yes, yes. You should never just <coughs> chuck them in the bin. No, they should go to a, and it's a really bad name for it. But they should go to a we capable facility but it's we with three e's <coughs> we um and it's all about the, the disposal of uh, of this kind of stuff so yeah um that's that's a a protected standard if you like lithium ion battery but of course these days we don't use things like that much anymore and the reason that we don't need to is because we've got um the likes of the EVIC and the E-Mode and the MVP and the VTR and all of these other electronic mods that have protection circuitries built into them. Um, as Vapor Caper has just said, if you're using a regulated mod, then IMR batteries are the better way to go and we'll, we'll come on to that. I'm going to try and, and cover everything you need to know. When we start talking about the safer chemistry, um, and let's, let's go back to... Uh, to there we're looking at these lithium manganese oxide lithium iron phosphate lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide uh, NMC's and NCOs really NCA's rather um, we generally refer to them in the vaping world as an IMR type and, and a, an example of an IMR is here this is an AW IMR 18650 1600 milliamp hour um, 
one of the first, if not the first, IMR 18650s that were around. But you'll notice there's no protection circuitry at the bottom of this. There's no little lump there to tell you it's there. The nipple top may be a change from the way the, uh, the battery internally is supplied, but that's unprotected. And you might think, well, hang on a minute, I like the idea of a little bit of protection. But the fact of the matter is, whether you're using a kick um, or an EVIC or a Zorbas, any of the electronic style mods have got built in protection. And you can short them out and they just switch off. And indeed, you'll remember, Chris, when we looked at those uh, short stoppers. Yes. The mod itself, when we put them in a protected mm. uh, electronic mod, the mod was cutting out before the fuse would mm. blow. That's mm. how quick they are. That is how quick they are. So when you're working with something like a VTR, something like a Kick, uh, an Inican 134, um, even that one you've got, the... I've gone forgotten. Cool the, the Cool Fires. The Cool Fire 1 and 2 both have protection circuitry in them such that if there is a problem they just switch off as quick as that probably quicker in fact milliseconds if there's a short circuit they'll switch off they refuse to fire so all of the protection is done in the mod and that's that's quite important to note so if you're unsure about winding consistent coils and what um, amperages you're going to be drawing then perhaps an electronic mod is more for you than a purely mechanical one. But if you are going to use a mechanical mod and go for lower resistance coils, sub ohm in it, if you like, then you need to be looking at batteries that have got what's known as a high C rate. I'm going to try and explain what that means, but in actual fact, it's dealt with better probably by the likes of the purple e-fests and that's one of the reasons I like these because it tells you that it'll do 30 amps all right and that it will also do uh, 60 amps for 75 seconds without overheating or anything along those lines but the C rate the discharge rate on these things is all about the capacity uh, and the capacity for discharge and what you really want if you're going to be sub warming is at least 10 C and preferably higher now if you've got a 2000 milliamp hour battery for instance 1 C would be to provide those 2000 milliamps of power over the period of an hour or 4000 milliamps 4 amps in other words for half an hour and 8 amps for quarter of an hour, that's how it works. A 10C means that you can get 10 times the rated capacity in a short period of time. And since we don't press the buttons on these for much longer than 15 <coughs> seconds, then you can see 10C will probably work you quite nicely. But if it's rated for 30 amps, that's half the battle. Um, and that's gonna help you out an awful lot. Um, a lot of times people ask me what's my favourite battery. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I use all of the time. And that's... Uh -huh. Yes, I've been on the wrong camera. That's these. The CGR 18650CH, the Panasonic one. And I'm using these E-Fests as well now. I like these two. I like them a lot. Um, and they are basically... Those mm -hmm. are pretty much all I use. And that, at the moment, is because of the capacity. I also like the AWIMRs they've never ever let me down and these are the ones that we've tried to make explode I don't know how many times and we've never managed it yet have we Chris? Absolutely so, not. So just, just out of interest or curiosity what would a battery look like in a disposable e-cig? Um, well it's an easy way to find out. I mean would that just be one of those little disc batteries? Or? No. Tell you what, we'll take one to bits after the break, shall we? Right. We'll do that. We shall Can I throw some <coughs> questions to you from chat before you go to a break? Yes, yes of course you can. Go for it. Um, I've got a couple here. Lamental. 
um, has asked, where do you stand on the IMR versus protect protected batteries choice for use in mechanical mods and also hybrid batteries like the Pani PD and PF650s? That's from the mental. It's an interesting one. I, I, I made a choice a while ago because my eyesight's not what it was and everybody knows I've got fingers like bananas. And I, to be honest, I lose count when I'm coiling. I tend to use now, everything has got either a kick in it, a Zorbas on it, or I'm using uh, a wattage controlled mod. I very rarely go mechanical. If I was to go all mechanical though, I would be using either my panties or the E-Fests or the IMRs. Um, because at the, at the wattage I like, everything tends to be running 12, 13, 14 watts and I wouldn't want to be using a protected battery because I can't make them trip out with you know a 1.1, 1.2 ohm coil. So you've got to be looking at using safer chemistry if you're going to be working purely mechanical. Was there another one, Chris? Um, just a comment, really, from Disco Dares, and I think it's something we probably will cover before the end of the show. Um, could you define sub on to the viewers? Because there could be some people watching on YouTube, new people who don't understand what sub on vaping is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, more than happy to do that. As, as we know, that there are basically two major parts to any ASIG. There's the battery and there's the coil. Everything else is just, that's all changeable. But there is a coil, which if you watched last week's show, you'll have seen Keith making one. And it's basically just a, a helix of wire that has a resistance to it and heats up. Now normally, that resistance will be somewhere around two ohms if, if you understand what an ohm is that's it's, it's a measure of resistance it would in normal terms it's around about two ohms that would be where um, where your Aspire would be it would be where your iClear 30 would be where any of the, the already built devices uh, atomizers you get they're around two ohms some might be 2.2 some might be 1.8 some might be 1.6 the majority of um, electronic mods will work with resistances as low as 1 ohm. Some will go down to 0.9 or 0.8 of an ohm. But once you get below that ohm, that 1 ohm resistance, down to 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, it's sub ohm, less than 1 ohm. And what that does is it heats up a lot hotter, it draws a lot more current, from your battery and it makes your battery work that little bit harder that's that's basically it and you can achieve the same results as sub ohm by using a power controlled mod an evic a copper the zorbas the kick all of these kinds of things the mvp the vtr and so on and so on and so forth um, and there, there is a calculation that you can do. I'm not going to get into it now because maths is boring. V equals I over R, the usual Ohm's law. And that'll tell you how much current you're drawing for a given resistance at a given voltage, assuming you know what the voltage is. Is that, is that clear enough, Chris, or do I need to go further? No, I even understood. Thank you. No problem. So sub-Ohm is less than an Ohm. It's hotter. You can do this. You could do the same by raising the voltage or by raising the wattage at which you vape because that's exactly what's happening as you drop the resistance you're using more watts more power gets hotter and it gives you to a degree better better results depending on what the results are that you're looking for um. the coil is tiny you're talking about a, a micro coil going completely mad that's it but that section there is the battery yeah that bit there if you just look at the top right Keith you'll see that section there is the battery and just for completeness I'll put an 18650 beside it yeah all right that's the difference in size it's God. it is absolutely ah. minuscule 
ridiculously God. small. That's an 18650 beside it. That there is the battery in a vape. And believe me, the batteries in any Cigar Lake are no bigger than that. Now it might, if we're very fortunate, it might have some writing on. And indeed it has. I don't know whether you'll be able to make that out. It says it's a 68380D, 3.7 volts, 0 0.33 watt hours is what it says on there. That's it. That's the size of the battery. And as Vapor Caper has said, and that is why Cigar Lakes are. Um, Fomago said sub ohm at DD. If I sub ohm that, it would, I can almost guarantee you, it would go pop. That's, that's the size that's of the battery, the battery in there. Right. Now. Um, which brings us hurtling towards chargers. Now, charging a lithium ion battery, and it doesn't matter whether it's safe for chemistry, protected, unprotected, it doesn't make a heap of the difference. You should not charge them beyond 4.2 volts. When they get to 4.2 volts, the charger should stop charging. And I have here two that do exactly that and I need to zoom out a little bit I had that shot all set up before the show but never mind take the pen out of the way otherwise I'm advertising the garage I've got um, a Nightcore IntelliCharger i4 which I ordered on Friday um, because everybody was saying how good they were so I wanted to get one to test for myself and my favourite of the chargers which is the Xstar VP1 and I'll show you why it's my favourite because it does what I need it to do very, very quickly indeed. For instance, if I want to check whether a battery's charged, I can simply stick it on there and zoom it in a little bit, Dave. And you can see that that battery is at 4.21 volts. It's fully charged. And you can see that it's no longer putting any current through that battery. And I've tested this with all my meters and all my oscilloscopes and everything else, and I can tell you for a certain fact, there's nothing going through that battery now. I haven't done all of the testing on this IntelliCharger yet, but so far, whoops, aside from the, uh, the flashing amber light, which is driving me nuts, I have to say, it's performing very well. I'll take that battery out because I know it's charged. Um, but it seems to be doing the job quite nicely. I'm quite liking the way it works. I'm going to do a full battery of tests on it to let you know whether it's working as well as it ought to. So are you saying that on those chargers you couldn't overcharge the batteries? Um, I can tell you for an absolute certain fact that that is the case. Right. Certainly with the X-Star <coughs> VP1, in fact all of the X-Star chargers because I've tested them all out. You can leave a battery on that for three months and it won't overcharge. When you take it off it'll be at 4.2 volts. Right. And I know that's right because I left the blow, I left a battery on charge when we went away on holiday. And it was right. fine. The house was still here when we got back. It hadn't blown up. And people say you should never charge a battery unattended. You should always be around while the battery's charging. I'm going to say this now. If you buy a proper charger, you don't need to be there. If you have a charger that you think you need to be around in case it's going wrong, get shot of it and get a good one. And don't go and buy one for £2.10 off a market and expect it to work properly. Expect to pay between £16 and £25 for a decent charger that you know will do the job. Go and have a look at Battery Boy's tests. He's looked at them all. Look at the Torch forums. They've looked at them all. And there are a vanishingly small number of chargers that you can put your trust in. Xstar is one, IntelliCharger is another, I am told, I haven't yet to do the tests, and Peeler is another one. Those three makes appear to be the trustworthy ones. Frankly, a Trustfire charger, I would, if, if you gave me one, 
I, I wouldn't even give you a buck. I'd take a sledgehammer to it. Thank God they've been recalled. They're a bloody death trap looking for somewhere to happen. Am I right? <laughs>